than one minute. This session will now begin. Please start the recording. Hello, and welcome to the ICANN 75 plenary session, Internet Fragmentation, the DNS, and ICANN. My name is Andrea Glandon, and I am the Remote Participation Manager. Please note that this session is being recorded and follows the ICANN expected standards of behavior. Interpretation for this session includes Arabic, Chinese, French, Russian, and Spanish. Click the interpretation icon in the Zoom toolbar to select your preferred language output. During this session, comments or questions submitted in the chat pod will only be read aloud if they are in the proper format, as I will note in the chat shortly, and during the designated discussion time. If you wish to speak during the designated discussion time, for our virtual participants, please click raise hand in the Zoom toolbar. Before speaking, please mute all devices and notifications. Please ensure that you have selected your preferred language input. Please speak clearly and a reasonable pace to allow for accurate interpretation. Once the moderator states your name, please unmute your microphone and state your name. For our in-person participants, if you would like to ask a question, please go to one of the standing microphones in the room. There will three, be three polls conducted during the session. Input person participants should log into Zoom to take those polls. To view the real-time transcription, click closed captioning in the Zoom toolbar. Now please welcome Kari Esfandiari, you may begin. Hello everyone. Hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, today, uh, I have the pleasure of moderating this session uh, together with Bruno and uh, Nigel. I pass the floor to Bruno. Thank you, Patty, and hi everyone. My name is Bruno Santos, the other co-moderator. Um, this session will also be moderated virtually by Nigel Hickson as well, so it's worth mentioning that. Um, welcome again, and for the next um, hour and a half, we plan to entertain everyone with a relevant and timely discussion on internet fragmentation, the DNS, and ICANN. Um, today, this is going to be a, a, a discussion and also an interactive plenary. We plan to also have um, some polls going on during the debate, and um, as discussants, we'll be joined by um, John Crane from ICANN.org, Ren Mohan from the, from the Security Stability Advisory Committee. Um, Farzani anybody, our um, remote um, discussant from the non-commercial stakeholder group. James Blado from the Registrar um, Stakeholder Group and Paul Wilson from the Address Supporting Organization. Before um, moving on with the session and handing um, the floor back to Patty, I'll, yeah, I guess um, just to remind everyone to um, pay attention to the, the mentee. We plan to have the interaction online for the first session as a mentee interaction with work clouds and, and a poll and, and so on. So Patty, you can start with the session. Excuse me, before we continue, just remember everyone to speak slowly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I represent ALAC. Sorry. 
I represent ALAC, which strives to safeguard the interest of end users. And this session has a strong end user component. I'd like to start by explaining the purpose of this session. This is an attempt to contribute to the emergence of a shared understanding of internet fragmentation and to provide a space for an inclusive dialogue and reflection on the challenges it, pre it presents to the ICANN community. Today's session uh, is, uh, I like to explain how uh, our plan to conduct our discussion. The session is composed of five parts. First, I will introduce the topic, explaining the motivation, the potential outcomes, and key uh, concerns. Next, the fragmentation impacts on the ICANN community will be discussed by Ram and John. After that, we will be joined by three accomplished panelists from ICANN community for a panel discussion. Next, we will welcome questions from the floor and online. Please log in into the Zoom, raise hand and or use chat to post your question as we progress through this session. <clears throat> Also, I would like to ask our panelists to address questions and or comments from the chat room during their intervention if they want or answer it during QA session. In final part, panelists will have a chance to express their observing remarks. Throughout the session, Bruno will conduct polls and discuss their results. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce the subject. Fragmentation as a concept is not new. From 1970s to 90s, a period known as Portugal Wars, multiple host protocols driven by commercial and technical motives fought over market share. IP eventually, eventually gained critical mass and others voluntarily retreated. In 2000s, cybersecurity, privacy, antitrust, and other concerns meant increasing legislation and self-regulations, mainly at content and application levels, which increased control and was criticized as introducing some degree of fragmentation. More recently, increasing rel uh, reliance of critical services on digital technology elevated national security concerns. While pandemic highlighted dependency for services on foreign owned and controlled enterprises, sensitizing concerns over sovereignty and posing doubt on the wisdom of globalization, and of course, internet as its poster child. Increased geopolitical tension and cyber hostility have pushed internet and its global open technology into the center of geopolitics. The internet is an extraordinary human achievement and the defining technology of our time. Its fragmentation could be determinant, not just for the technology, but also for our democratic values and lifestyle. There is an ongoing debate about the precise meaning of the term fragmentation. In this session, for the sake of clarity and with the danger of oversimplification, we refer to trends towards non-universal internet experiences where the globally connected internet is fragmented based on the location of user in sovereign territories. While it's unlikely that in the near future, any country will cut off itself completely from the universal open internet due to the economic and political disadvantages of doing so, it's a grave mistake not to take the current trends in that direction seriously. Particularly concerning our trends towards multiple and incompatible root zone files and associated naming and numbering systems. The DNS route is at the center of con contention because it is a centralized point of control on the logic layer. Other concerns are over changes in the routing architecture and the spread of incompatible technical standards. Two scenarios are predicted. One, biofication of the internet as a result of a strategic competition between the US and China, resulting in technology cold war. 
Two, a federated internet motivated by a desire for more autonomy with a collection of nation state networks is still linked by the internet protocol, but for many purposes separated. These trends could fragment the open and universal internet to an internet experience controlled by nation national borders. This will limit internet <clears throat> user end users access to information and expose their data to national government scrutiny. Another concern is that fragmentation shifts the internet governance from the global multi stakeholder model to a government control model. In doing so, the voices of internet end users will be weakened, if not diminished. There are also serious concerns over stability and predictability and possible collision between public and private names. Finally, there are concerns over innovations, mainly in blockchain, that are aimed to decentralize the DNS system. These are often initiated by non-governmental actors for commercial interest and or libertarian sentiments, while unlikely to gain prominence but it still are concerning. So far, the open and universal internet has shown remarkable resilience. And, but how long and how far can it endure the ideological pressures? And how would it impact the ICANN community and its multi-stakeholder model? We have excellent speakers and qualified panelists to discuss these issues. But first we turn to Bruno, Bruno Fuller is yours. Thank you, Patty. And to get the conversation going, uh, um, we have a first poll to get the feeling of the audience as well. So our first question would be, um, can we have the, the mentee on the screen as well? Yes, um, it's on the Zoom chat for the ones um, online. So the first question for everyone is, is the internet currently fragmented? Um, it's a single question, a simple question, yes or no. We plan to have like some some views and perceptions from all. As soon as we have the results. <laughs> but yeah. But as we go as well, as soon we, we can work on getting the results for this poll on the Zoom. But also I will hand the floor to John and Rem who start the debate on a definition, because it, it's often the case that some parts of the IG broader communities also um, are still dwelling on whether fragmentation exists, what does it mean? But then we plan to have a conversation between um, community and the org now. And then um, I'll hand the floor to you, Rem or John, please. Yeah, John, so please. Okay, I'm John Crane. I'm ICANN's chief technical officer. Um, I'm going to start with uh, what I consider a basic concept around this, and that is that the room we're in today, um, all of you here, are part of the discussion that helps create and maintain the internet experience of the end users. For the domain name system, this multi-stakeholder community has spent almost a quarter of a century um, more for some of the individuals in here, and some of us have been working on this predating ICANN. And it was about defining norms and safeguards that have enabled users to experience a single interoperable network. That's a network where the underlying navigation of that network is defined by an unwritten agreement that we will use the same protocols, the same namespaces, and also the same policies and agreements that sort of couple those together. Fragmentation in my mind is moving away from those agreements. Um, you know, and the very meaning of the word is fragment of fragmentation is not having something singular. It, it is actually the dividing of those networks and the splitting of those networks. The name, the main name system is a critical part of the internet's infrastructure. No matter how you interact with it, um, whether it's through apps or typing into browsers or emails, it is absolutely critical that it is a unique singular system. 
Um, an intervention in how that domain name system works can be very problematic, um, especially when it's invisible to the end users. So that's sort of how I think about fragmentation is that moving away from the single interoperable internet and a understood set of expectations from the end users about how it works. So with that, I'm gonna hand over to my good friend, Ram Mohan to take it a little bit deeper into some of the technical stuff. Thank you, Ram. Thank you, John. I'm Ram Mohan and uh, I'm here from the uh, Security and Stability Advisory Committee. Fragmentation is about how a combination of factors, geopolitics, regulation, new technologies can and have already combined to shake the trust, certainty, and stability that the domain name system will continue to work seamlessly and interoperably. We are witnessing something momentous where the ability of a user to type in a website in a browser and to know that they will reach the site automatically is no longer certain, depending on where you're accessing the internet. The DNS is a critical part of the infrastructure, no matter how the user interacts with it. I gave you an example of a user um, typing it into a browser or you sending an email, but the DNS is actually necessary to apps that don't appear to use it at all. And that's the common case anymore for most users almost all the time. We're using applications on our phones, on various devices, and those applications don't give you an indication that they're using the DNS underneath, but that foundational layer is what all of this underpins. The fact that the user cannot see the DNS in their favorite apps or cloud services means that users expect the DNS to just work. And as John said earlier, Intervention in the functioning of the DNS creates important and problematic issues, even when such interventions are invisible to the end user. As a foundational infrastructure layer, fragmentation at the DNS layer will create failure of critical infrastructure that the world depends upon. Now, what actually happens, fragmentation creates internet islands without bridges to connect them. Pari was speaking about a federated internet, but what we're really talking about is a system that could leave users stranded, national economies undermined. And the, the other point to think about is fragmentation shifts power and control from the user to the bodies that build these internet islands and do it in a way that is often invisible to the user, but also removes the ability of the user to reverse course. It takes away options from users. Predictability and stability underpin the user experience on the internet. The degradation of the user experience is the fundamental issue that fragmentation really is about. This is not a technology problem. This is not a content problem. This is not a problem about new disruptive technologies uh, that create innovation. It's not any of those. It's actually about making sure that the protocols that provide for predictable user experience and utility remain stable. If you, the user's experience is degraded, people are gonna be forced to have to transact 
across multiple networks in different ways. And that results in a completely fragmented user experience. So a fragmented internet is really the technical way of looking at a fragmented world and a fragmented user experience. The power of the centralized DNS is in its interoperability and the utility that it provides for the end users to come together and use the and all of these technologies in a simple, single, and predictable way. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, and thank you, Ram, for very interesting and informative discussion. And indeed, it's these characteristics of the internet that turned it to our to defining technology of our time. I would like now to invite our panelists for an exciting discussion. We have three teams to deep dive into. I want to start with the first team, the impact of internet fragmentation on ICANN community, especially end users. Of course, both all three of us uh, touched on this subject and uh, uh, explained the possibilities. I'd like now uh, to ask Nigel, who is a remote um, uh, moderator, to intervene and maybe we can hear his opinions on these topics. Nigel? Yes, good morning and uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be very brief indeed because I think uh, you know the value is going to be in the in 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 the discussion and in the chat, and I, I do encourage uh, as, uh, I do encourage everyone to uh, log on uh, e e even if you're physically there, and uh, it's great that you're physically there, and I I wish I was as well uh, to to take part in the in the chat and raise questions on 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 this issue, uh, and. Just really want to reflect something that uh, others and uh, Parry has said right at the beginning, and Bruner as well. I mean, we're we're, we're not going to uh, you know solve the problems here. We're not going to uh, come up with a, uh, a solution to internet fragmentation. We're not going to convince the uh, governments of the world to think more about their policy and legislative initiatives. But I suppose what we hope to do, and what we discussed at length in putting this panel together. Is, is to at least, you know, uh, at least to get us talking about this issue, how it affects ICANN, how it affects other institutions, how it affects us all, how it affects the end user, how it affects the future of the internet, just so we're a bit more aware of some of the implications of internet fragmentation. And uh, it, it's great to be among the, so many experts. So I'll, yeah, so look forward to the discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Nigel. And uh, I'm going to ask if the industry will be able to provide a consistent customer experience. And maybe uh, Paul or James, would you like to take it? Thank, thanks very much. And um, thanks for the opportunity to be here. I think I'll take my mask off because it seems that the uh, Voices are harder to hear through that filter. Um, at the in the RIRs, where uh, we work at the at the layer of, of IP, which is the the Internet Protocol, which provides the services on which we all uh, depend, and we're often asked about I, IP fragmentation, which uh, is just as Ram explained, it's about creating islands in the IP network, islands that uh, are mostly they mostly tend to be geographic, although some sometimes specific to individual networks but in either case what they what happens is that uh, the traffic flow between those those islands is interrupted in some in some way in an unfragmented internet in theory a packet should should be able to traverse easily un, uninterrupted from any one point to any other and uh, fragmentation represents an, in, an interruption or an interference with that that traffic flow so that Absolutely, certainly has uh, has huge huge impacts on those who are who are affected. It tends to happen at uh, at local level, and it tends and it tends to be implemented by by governments, for instance. 
to the to the extent that people in this room uh, can take a message about fragmentation back to their own their own governments, back to their own communities, and discuss the impacts that happen specifically within those communities to to um, understand whether or not the fragmentation that uh, that exists is has got uh, an impact on them. It's it's really uh, it becomes a local a local issue. I think one of the things if we accept that this happens. Uh, throughout the world uh, in many cases for many reasons that I think probably one of the, the critical things for industry is a, is a question of transparency and whether when at the IP but in, at, at any um, layer of the internet in fact when, when uh, filters are placed when, when the theoretical global end-to-end -end internet is, is being interrupted in any way by a deliberate act that it needs to be done according to some uh, for instance, a rule of law, some transparent process, some some uh, process in which, for instance, through a multi-stakeholder um, uh, policy development, we can we can have some some say in and avoid, for instance, the un unexpected, uh, unintended consequences of uh, of filtering or fragmentation, which happens for one apparently reasonable reason in theory, but which but which can affect and have impact on many people. Uh, so we're talking end users here as well as the industry that's trying to trying to provide uh, services to those to those users. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And could industry uh, actually uh, would you like James to make a comment? Yes, thank you. And uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, allowing me to participate. And one of the dangers of appearing on such a distinguished panel is that uh, a lot of the great points are already uh, made by the time your microphone is uh, lit up. Um, so I just want to echo a lot of the uh, comments that have been made previously. Um, from an industry and, and commercial service provider perspective, fragmentation is friction. It uh, prevents us from reaching our customers uh, and, and developing markets and providing services on an equal and consistent basis around the world. Um, and it prevents our customers from establishing a globally uh, useful and recognizable and resolvable identity for which they can reach their audiences. And so fragmentation is, uh, is a diminishment of the value of the internet itself. And uh, I think that uh, the, the points made by, uh, by John and Ram and, uh, and Paul are, um, are incredibly important because it becomes an increasing burden, not only on uh, the businesses that are trying to provide those services, but on the consumers that are trying to use them and their confidence that those uh, uh, services will function as intended. I think in the uh, uh, best case scenario, fragmentation means you're not sure if your message is getting through or your services are resolvable across boundaries. Uh, in the worst case scenario, those uh, the DNS could be used to intercept those requests and those traffic uh, requests and resolve them to um, alternative sources of information or alternative resources, uh, masquerading perhaps as, uh, as something that uh, uh, we're developing or putting out or something that our customers are trying to develop. So it, it, it becomes a, um, uh, 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 an erosion of the value of the internet itself. Uh, what to do about it, I think, is the next big question. And I had two thoughts on that. I think one echoes what Paul was saying earlier, which is that um, I would propose that we would turn the multi-stakeholder model inside out. Um, normally, I think we're familiar with everyone coming from government and uh, industry and technology and academia and bringing our perspectives into ICANN to advance the work. But I think that that... Uh, has to flow the other direction as well, and that we have to be comfortable taking our knowledge and expertise and our appreciation for the multi-stakeholder model back to our day jobs, whether that's in government or industry, and recognizing when uh, uh, maybe a tempting piece of legislation or a new uh, protocol undermines the um, interoperability of the internet, and to uh, flag that in those circles for discussion and for understanding and to carry that message back um, uh, outside of ICANN into those circles. And the second thing is, I think, and this is uh, a theme that comes up quite a lot, uh, is that um, I think it's important for us to work to advance the um, practical and uh, real world outcomes of the work that we do at ICANN. 
so many different topics or initiatives are uh, stalled or take too long to develop, and that uh, creates a credibility problem at ICANN, and it encourages and incentivizes um, folks who uh, and interests around the world to try to find ways to work around ICANN. Um, and I think that's a problem. And uh, I think we can all, uh, uh, all of us, I think someone mentioned in the chat, we're all a little bit responsible for, uh, for this issue here of turning, turning ICANN into a credible and effective uh, vehicle for addressing these problems. And maybe the temptation of a fragmented solution won't be, uh, won't be so prominent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with these remarks, I like to ask, could the industry remain competitive considering the, all the problems that it's facing? James, would you like to take it? Yes, thank you, Pari. It is a good question. And I think it speaks to the additional costs and burdens and uncertainty uh, that businesses would be faced uh, in terms of being competitive uh, around the world. Um, there are pluses and minuses, of course, to um, to being, uh, 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 you know, whether it's a global uh, service provider. Um, but again, I think ultimately the benefits outweigh some of the um, downsides in that a customer can expect an even consistent and valuable experience no matter where they live, whether they live in, in here in Malaysia or in Europe or in, uh, in North America, everyone can participate on an equal basis. And I think that's what is um, in jeopardy of being lost with fragmentation. Paul, any comments from you? In this case, I like now to ask Farzane, what are the greatest concerns of civil society in facing the digital fragmentation? Farzane? Hi, everybody. So this is Farzane by the non-commercial stakeholder group. Um, I'm a little bit uh, sorry. I, uh, I didn't know that I have to come from like the civil society perspective. I had uh, like a my own thoughts on this but of course we have discussed this as as at ncsg and i hope that i can give you an accurate answer uh so internet fragmentation can uh, affect access to the internet and uh prevent us from having access to an interoperable global and secure internet that i uh, may i remind everybody here was the basis for indiscriminatory connection of all people, regardless of their gender, their nationality to uh, the internet. And uh, uh, for civil society and digital rights uh, activists, this is, this is fundamental to uh, freely express themselves online when they don't have those chances uh, offline and uh, to fight for their rights as um, they have been doing uh, for many years and they are doing even today in Iran. So, um, and I think that for internet fragmentation, uh, if I want to bring the, um, the more academic uh, perspective and the more uh, kind of I can relate it, uh, I think that internet fragmentation, we've been talking about in so many ways that we are not uh, paying attention, pay, paying enough attention to uh, how our access to critical properties of the internet is being diminished um, day, uh, day by day, and we need to monitor the situation. And by critical properties of the internet, uh, I, Internet Society has um, several definitions uh, for, for me, how I frame it is that when there is no alternative to uh, uh, connect to the global internet, that would be internet uh, fragmentation. So uh, when we don't have access to IP addresses um, and our devices cannot talk to each other, when a segment of the society and, and, and the world is um, uh, faces these issues, that is internet fragmentation. When, uh, which has not happened yet, and hopefully it will not happen, 
but uh, I disagree with, uh, I don't know if I got Ram's point that uh, the degradation of service is uh, internet fragmentation. Service has been degrad um, degrading uh, for, uh, for a long time uh, through like external and internal uh, reasons. Um, apps have not worked in certain countries because of sanctions and uh, because of other issues. So um, I don't frame it like that, but if you ask me from the civil society perspective, why internet fragmentation is a bad thing is that because then we are gonna have a discriminatory um, internet that will judge your who can access what based on the color of their skin, where they are located, and their race, their gender. And um, I'm not saying that this, this is not happening now uh, on the internet, but at least the critical properties of the internet can afford us to indiscriminately connect people. And internet fragmentation will stop that. It doesn't exist yet, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, please, Ram. Just to quickly respond to Farzane, the, the point I'm making about uh, the degradation, I recognize that, you know, when you're on a, on a plane, your app doesn't work and you're not connected to the internet. You can't call that a fragmented internet. I understand that. But really, I think the, the thing that we ought to recognize is if we accept as a norm that degradation of our experience uh, on how we can access the internet, degradation is the norm and that we should just expect degradation to happen. That I think is actually the beginning of a slippery slope where you can get to the point where for whatever reason, you do not have predictability in how your applications, how you access the internet works. I think that is a real problem. Please. I just, just uh, would like to make a point on the nature of the nature of fragmentation as a kind of entropy in the in the internet that um, the, the internet uh, has been imagined and it has been maintained as a consistent global infrastructure, consistent at all layers and unfragmented to the ma maximum extent possible. And there's a tendency to take that for granted as though it just happens, as though it's just a, an automatic out outcome of the internet and the standards. The fact is that the, the standards enable that and that's, the, that's the, the key. The standards enable the global consistent uh, internet uh, that we all know and love, we take it for granted, but the, the maintenance of that is actually a lot of work. It's, it's enabled by, it's, it's, the possibility is, is enabled by the internet, but the actual implementation requires a lot of work, like, like any kind of coordination or collaboration. It doesn't happen automatically. It happens by very extensive combined efforts across the, across the world. And if those efforts stop, then like the randomness that occurs in the in the universe generally without energy being added entropy takes over and the internet becomes fragmented i think a fragmented uh internet is a lower energy easier outcome in many in many respects than the internet that we need to maintain as the as the consistent global model that we all that we all kind of take for granted thanks thank you very much anyone else from the panel want to make any comments so next question uh, is directed to Ram. What is the impact of fragmentation on ICANN mission? Thank you. Uh, and in this area, I think we have to uh, look at uh, fragmentation in, in multiple ways, right? Th there is the, the, the core issue about the DNS and the technological challenges with interventions with automatic rewrites uh, at the DNS layer that um, users have no control over. 
um, that that is one aspect. And Pari, as you began at the, at the very beginning, there are geopolitical um, types of concerns as well. Now, earlier this year, we saw how ICANN, the organization and the board responded to you know requests to take uh, TLDs off the route, things like that. So I think there's already uh, ICANN um, in that way is setting um, a, a good example of how to respond to those kinds of requests that, that are a little bit more in the geopolitical area. As far as um, issues such as new technologies uh, that come through, I think really ICANN's role is to welcome innovation and to uh, really make this an, an open tent and, and bring uh, the opportunity for new technologies uh, to, to come in to, uh, to work and to interplay. As a community, however, and as a multi-stakeholder community, I think the biggest part that we ought to be concerned about and um, keep an eye on is to make sure that not only new technologies, not only uh, you know DNS interventions, not only geopolitical issues, that we while we keep an eye on those, that the real lens that we look at all of these fragmentation um, uh, areas that can cause fragmentation, the lens that we look at is what happens to the actual users of the internet? What happens when their applications, their systems um, that they expect to work stop working inexplicably, right? And that's not necessarily something that uh, is completely within ICANN's remit, but we are part of that global ecosystem that Paul was talking about, where we have to invest our energy uh, to make sure that the, the idea that this thing just works continues to remain a core deliverable, the expectation has to continue to be met. So I think that is a real challenge um, for ICANN and our multi-stakeholder model. Yeah, yeah and following up a little bit on what Ram was saying, we, we, we need to realize that the network and the way we use it will continuously evolve. And that's a good thing. So, so we're all for evolution of the network evolution even of the namespaces etc um but, but it is as ram said important to remember the end user perspective on this um you know it is normal for different networks to behave slightly differently they have different filtering rules things like that often done with purpose um but it does change the user experience and especially in the area where we have um the risk of overlapping namespaces for for example and you know we've talked for i don't know how many years about the issue of um, names name collisions within the dns namespace now we do need to keep an eye on these things we have to remember that when experiencing the internet a user will use a device and they might not realize that they can actually even from a singular device see different paths into the internet and different filters etc so I think at ICANN, a lot of it is for us to help to understand these things and then to inform, um, to bring people that are looking for other solutions into the discussion so they actually understand that when they're looking for revolutionary ideas that there are going to be consequences of those, what they are, and we can help them within our framework sort of take a sensible evolutionary approach to this where, as Paul said, you know, we we build in the maintenance and we make sure that we keep the internet working for the in, for the end user, and as far as we can, keep it as single and interoperable as as possible. Any any comments from the panel? I do have I do have one uh, to follow up Ram's um, uh, mention of new technologies and uh, within the. Uh, RAR system. We're we're often asked about IPv6. We often hear the the misapprehension that IPv6 
and IPv6 are, and IPv4 are, are not compatible or that IPv6 represents a fragmentation of the internet. And that's, that's not the case at all. Um, it's a, a little like at the lower at the lower level, you have uh, an evolution of technologies from modems to 3G to 4G to coax cables and and uh, and optical fibers. None of these are compatible with each other. They're in fact alternative ways to provide that lower level service to the internet. Likewise, IPv6 is an alternative to IPv4, and we're going through a transition now between one and the other. And it's not that the, it is not that uh, there is there needs to be a compatibility because one is simply replacing the other. And there's, there's an analogy that I know, I know that Fazanay will like, um, which is to think of the V6 transition as like the transition to electric vehicles from gasoline vehicles. You know, the two vehicles, they're not compatible. You don't put petrol in a, an electric car, but they both use the same roads. They provide the same service to passengers and drivers. They operate they're designed to be compatible. So it's not a, a case of random design of some random new transportation mechanism. It's something that is designed to fit in with the layered model of transportation. And uh, so that is, that's one analogy. And another part of that would be uh, this sort of suggestion that V4 and D6 should have been more compatible. There should have been a, there should have been a transition between them that made it easier. Maybe an analogy there would be the hybrid vehicle, but the the point um, the the decision that was made back in the early days of of IPv6 was that they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't do that. The added complexity of providing the uh, some kind of higher level of interoperability between the two at that layer would have added a great deal of complexity. And there's no more complex complex vehicle on the road these days than than the hybrid vehicle, right? So uh, there was an optimistic sense that. Uh, that the V6 transition would be would be easier than it, than it is, but it is it is carrying on just like the the vehicle one, and um, and uh, and it's something that we'll all we'll all gain the benefits of uh, in due course. Thanks. Thank you. Please. Thanks, and I, I'm trying to keep one eye on the chat because there's some really interesting ideas going through, and so I know we're probably eager to get to a, a open discussion. But um, I just wanted to make at least my view that um, making um, a movie available in one region and not another region at a different schedule or um, detecting a user's location so that you can change the language or currency of a uh, website. Uh, I don't consider those to be within the scope of the fragmentation that we're discussing. I think those are deliberate. Those are uh, efforts to either serve a business purpose or to um, uh, enhance or facilitate a user conversation. I think what we're talking about is maybe a, a, as as John and Paul uh, discussed, is getting down to those lower layers um, uh, of the uh, infrastructure and also uh, doing so in a way that might not be fully um, um, you know, um, detectable by the end user or by the service provider. So I just kind of, this is such a big topic and there's all these different facets to it and there's, all the, uh, there's a lot of discussion in the chat. Uh, and I wanted to think that in order to have a, a, a valuable session, I think we have to draw some boundaries around what's in and what's out, thanks. Thank you. Uh, now I do like to bring Nigel in because very interesting conversation is taking place in the chat. Nigel, floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Parry. And uh, yeah, a really excellent uh, discussion is taking place in the chat. And Andrea will uh, uh, sort of read out a couple of uh, questions, perhaps, and we can spread these over the uh, the whole session, but there's some excellent questions as well. But just on the just on the on the on the comments on on in the in the chat, of course, there's a debate going on on whether the internet is fragmented at the moment, or how much is it fragmented uh, uh, at the moment? Should we worry about it? There's a discussion. There was a discussion on new internet protocols, some of the standards that have, have been proposed in the ITU, for example. Is this an example of fragmentation does this really is this significant or not there's a discussion on whether uh, actions of the private sector should be uh, factored into this discussion and of course they they have been already uh, just 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 recently we heard by james and others uh, you know has business an interest in fragmentation indeed does business not want fragmentation uh, because even the likes of netflix or, or, or you know, the likes of Netflix, of course,
depend on that, on the global internet for their for their for their business. So we're having uh, discussions on that as well. The role of standards: can we standardise against fragmentation? Can is there is there a role for standards here? And of course, uh, uh, there's also a, a debate about decentralization versus fragmentation. Are they different concepts? Are they the same? Uh, so yeah, those are some of the ideas, and we can come back with uh, uh, with others. But uh, uh, Andrea, perhaps you could uh, just uh, uh, yeah focus on a couple of the questions. Thanks. Thank you, Nigel. The first question, based on the poll, 53% responded that the internet is fragmented. So the, what is ICANN doing or can do to fix this? Anybody? Thank you. Anybody wants to take this question? So, so there are questions. Sorry, I've got echoes here. So, so you know, there, there is questions about what are the role, what is the role of ICANN, the community here, right? ICANN the org, ICANN the board. So, from a org perspective, and specifically the group um, that I run, the office of the CTO, we are spending a lot of time trying to gather information to inform the community. So, you know, we do need to build discussions about this into the community, into the community dialogue. And, and from, a, from an org standpoint and where I sit, a lot of that is um, about providing advice, providing technical advice specifically. Um, you will see we've put, um, especially in the alternative namespace discussions, we put out a couple of blogs and papers. Um, and I think from an org perspective, that's where we sit. From a community perspective, I think you just need to have these discussions. We need to understand how this affects our policies or not. And, you know, we, for example, we will have a session, I believe it's later today, on emerging identifiers, which is where we bring people in who are working on things that look different to the internet we know. So we need to sort of embrace these people at some level so that we can understand what they're doing and we can actually bring it into the conversation, Ram. Thank you, John. Uh, I, I agree with you. And uh, going a little bit um, uh, further than that, uh, in addition to, to bringing those conversations and understanding these points of views, I think there are two things that um, I can, as a community, ought to be doing. First, is not to reflexively become defensive and say, this is mine. And uh, if there is something new that comes in, it is automatically bad. Um, so the first, the first job is to actually understand uh, what other technologies or other um, uh, initiatives are trying to do. The second thing, and this perhaps may be a, a, a bit more um, uh, uh, controversial in my my this is my personal perspective is I think we have a a particular issue going on right now which is that I can and and the you know all of us in the community not just the ICANN community but the technical community uh, the other the civil society all of the communities together we are the beneficiaries of of reasonably stable and predictable technology. We're calling this the internet. And we have a syntax about it. We have a nomenclature about it. And then we have a context about it. We call uh, these things TLDs. We call these things domain names. We have a particular syntax, you know, something dot something as an example, right? Um, and we expect it to work in a certain way. And I think we ought to have a conversation about what is a TLD? Uh, is a TLD something that is in the IANA root? Is a domain name uh, an identifier that is a, a part of that root system, right? I think we ought to have that conversation because the place where I worry about is that you have other technologies or other uh, areas that come and appropriate 
these the, the syntax, the nomenclature, the context that all of us have worked very hard to build credibility in and we take it. And the place where I worry about and inside the SAC, you know, we're having some conversations is what happens if that terminology gets taken over, diluted, and then there are failures in parts of that system and failures outside, quote unquote, outside of the system is invisible to the end user. End user doesn't really care whether this is part of the DNS or not part of the DNS. They just say, my domain name stopped working when it may not actually be a quote unquote domain name the way we know it. So I actually think we ought to have a real conversation about are these terms of art, are these when we say a TLD, when we say a domain name, is that syntax something that we ought to put clear boundaries, clear definitions around so that there is clarity in the minds of users that when they're using a domain name, when they're using a TLD, it is uh, the part of the system that has credibility and stability associated with it. So I think that's a question that we ought to think about and work through. We have two hands in the online room. Um, just so can we go to Farzani first? Yeah, thank you. So um, actually my comment was kind of related to the question as well. I am so surprised that our technical experts don't mention this. What is ICANN's mandate? So it is not the coordination of the whole domain name system. There are multiple actors that operate on the domain name system and ICANN doesn't have the authority to um, tell them what to do and um, uh, how to do things. So ICANN has a very limited uh, mission, but it is very important. It is a very important mission because it is providing that global uh, architecture. And uh, as my dear friend uh, Paul Wilson uh, analogy puts it so well, kind of the motorway, some part of the motorway uh, of. Uh, of the uh, traffic and how we actually connect. So as long as that kind, of, as long as ICANN's mission is endangered by a policies that government come up with or by uh, tech corporations, consolidation, or through other factors, then we need to monitor the situation. Or if blockchain finally one day comes up with that DNS, alternative DNS that they wanted to come up with like five years ago, then we need to think about it. And we need to think about like how, that is when fragmentation gets serious. Now, there are serious challenges that ICANN faces in coordinating the, uh, uh, the allocation of uh, domain names. And, um, and But at the moment, people have alternatives. And um, uh, despite the fact that uh, we have the issues of like some policies that uh, probably like uh, provide hurdles for ICANN to um, uh, allocate a new GTLD to some countries. Um, we still have, um, uh, still ICANN is uh, pretty uh, operationalized globally. So, um, but I am not denying that there is this danger and we need to monitor it. But at the moment, I don't think, I don't think po policy-wise there, there are certain things to mo uh, monitor, but at the moment, I don't think that um, there are um, many danger, uh, many uh, risks. And uh, the other thing that I, I, and I was really surprised by John Crane's um, comments that uh, they are discussing emerging identifiers and that is like some kind of like uh, looking after the uh, the 
uh, topic of fragmentation at the DNS level because I don't know if emerging identifiers are like ICANN related or within ICANN mandate. I don't know. Um, I'm not a technical person, so you can uh, respond. But anyway, I went on and on. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. I want to say that the risk is there. We need to monitor it. But at the moment, I, I don't. we don't see alternatives that are, are operationalized and can affect it, that global motorway that we, are all, we all have access to. Thank you. Thanks, Farzani. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I don't remember using the word threat anywhere in my conversation. So I will go back and look at the transcript to see if I actually said that or not. Um, so ICANN's mission is about the single global interoperable internet of which the public DNS is part. Right. You you are completely correct there. And and when the and that we have always had alternative offerings. Um, different DNS environments that actually use the DNS protocol have existed for years. Um, corporations sometimes run their own ecosystems internally. So that is true. And while ICANN doesn't have any authority over those systems, we should be aware of them and we should understand how they affect the ecosystem. And one of the things that I personally worry about is that when you see discussions and offerings of naming systems that are being promoted as being the DNS, the public DNS, uh, sometimes they're not, but it's often not clear. And when the end user is being offered these products, one of the things I would personally like to, to see is those offering those products being a little bit clearer about what the end user should expect from what they uh, they register, which is why we did a blog about that we called Buyer Beware to make sure that people, when they're buying these things, actually understand what they're being sold. Um, and, you know, some of these things that we call alternative DNS actually don't even use the DNS. Um, you know, we call things, some, there are some of the block chain technologies that also don't use the DNS, but they do, as Ram was saying, look like the DNS, very much so. And, and, and that could, could cause confusion. And when there is confusion, there is always opportunity for security problems. And we do have to worry about that. Thank you so much, John. Um, we have a queue on site and there's also one hand online, but maybe we can start with the on-site um, queue. So please go ahead. Hi, uh, this is Luciano. I'm Brazil's uh, representative to GAC. Uh, certainly will be a bit out of my depth to delve into this discussion uh, from a more technical perspective. I just wanted perhaps to bring a little bit of a more, if I may say so, political or diplomatic view on this on this debate that might be might be helpful. Uh, I recall when, when Nigel proposed this topic for debate, the first thing that came to our minds was that perhaps, well, the topic should call avoid internet fragmentation, or not internet fragmentation and its, 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 its implications. And uh, I think as was, has been discussed in this, in this panel, there are different interpretations about what internet fragmentation means. And uh, I'm certain that in certain levels, certain uh, segments of the internet, this may already be true. Uh, but following the debate, it seems to me that in relation to the ICANN's main role, uh, it's not yet a full reality. Uh, but what concerns us is the extent to which uh, the debate on internet fragmentation somehow informs uh, political narratives on this issue. Uh, narratives that are politically instrumentalized from different, different purposes in the international domain, let's say. Uh, so uh, it's not, of course, so I, I would recommend a bit of caution when we assume and, and work on the assumption that internet fragmentation is already there, because I think that serves political purpose as well. So I think that should be always uh, be approached with some, some, some caution. Of course, it's, uh, it's not new to say that from the South perspective, at least from the Brazilian perspective, I'm very sure for other countries from what has been called more recently the global south, uh, trends of internet fragmentation run counter to central objectives in terms of innovation, development, 
the reduction of inequality, uh, increases in connectivity, reduction uh, <clears throat> in digital divides, uh, the increasing of digital literacy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in our view, the consolidation of a view that internet fragmentation is already there as a given, is a something inevitable, is not something positive. Uh, so as, as I said, I think ICANN and the ICANN community should approach this issue with circumspection in the sense that this is part of a narrative uh, that can be instrumentalized in a political perspective. Uh, and that can involve uh, geostrategic debates on coalition building, on areas of influence, on the definition of which are uh, the right places to devise the next regulations on several aspects of the internet or even on several aspects of the digital economy. So I think that's something that we have to, we should have very clear uh, in our minds. Uh, and just to, 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 to complete this, this, this argument, I think uh, also the, the internet fragmentation narrative is not very helpful when it comes to try to find some common ground on the base that we have ahead international field. So we're talking, for instance, on the strengthening of the IGF, uh, on discussions on the ITU, uh, on discussions on uh, under the UN, on perhaps the renewal of the WISIS agenda, also in the debates on the global digital compact. So, uh, as I said, I think it's it's uh, uh, there is a technical element to this debate, of course, and I'm not the best person to say where fragmentation is or is not or is not, but I think we should be cautious when we look uh, uh, this 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 debate on internet fragmentation as something that can be used as a tool for political purposes. So that's what I, I wanted to bring to you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Luciano. I'm gonna suggest that we take all the interventions and then speakers can um, talk about them on the on the closing remarks, but we can go up to the next one. Thank you, my name is Ali Reza. I'm here on my own capacity. Basically, I think that I'm that, as everybody says, one of the I'm um, the reason of actually people thinking about I mean uh, just fragmenting I'm um, the fragmentation of the internet is your political reason. I mean, as a former CEO of that IR, which was very much involved in the day-to-day -day operation, I mean that in the sanctioned countries, I was I was actually witness to some threats or sometimes I'm mean, that acts by GTL by, by GL, GTLD operators or other stakeholders with, uh, um, that against the people that are actually using the domain names with. Um, that in the sanctioned countries uh, some of them sure some of them actually um that's not, um, that some of them actually has been um, as, as ram said some of them has been addressed um, that properly by i can regarding some of the things that happened but i think that the threat still there and actually i think that people are still thinking about what happened if the next threat comes in because i think that there is no clear kind of policy i mean that with regards to dealing with the um, um that with with regards to these things, I mean that in the sanctioned country, um, the, with dealing with the domain name system in the sanctioned countries. For example, if you um, um that look at the previous round of new GTLD application, it was not clear about what happened if if someone from a sanctioned country wants to have a new GTLD, and actually it was it was somehow it was just I mean that it hasn't been addressed, isn't? Um, it, it hasn't been added. So I think that it's now time for ICANN and community to come up with some sort of a clear policy around that, that actually everybody knows that what they need to do, because I think that it's a foggy environment right now. I mean, that I was hoping after NTIA transition, this will happen because it makes things easier, but it didn't. But I think that now it would be time to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Bashan? Merci beaucoup, Sébastien Bachelet en français. D'abord, euh, le motto de l'ICAN, c'est un monde, un Internet. Euh, Peut-être qu'il ne restera plus qu'un Internet. J'ai très peur pour le monde. Euh, merci à Ram et à John d'avoir euh, insisté sur le fait que ce n'est pas parce que des gens appelaient euh, un système avec le même mot que celui que nous, nous utilisons, que c'est la même chose. Et ça m'a rappelé une publicité, euh, il y a longtemps, il y a longtemps, vous n'étiez pas né, mais quand j'étais jeune, on parlait du Canada Dry. Et le Canada Dry avait cette publicité, ça a la couleur de l'alcool, ça a le goût de l'alcool, mais ce n'est pas de l'alcool. 
J'ai vraiment l'impression que tous ceux qui tentent de nous parler de DNS en dehors du DNS que nous, à l'ICANN, gérons, euh, volent quelque chose qu'ils n'ont pas et que pour l'utilisateur final, ce serait bien qu'on mette les points sur les i. Et donc, encore une fois, John et Ram, merci de l'avoir fait. Thank you. Next. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm Namran Nasir and I can follow. I'm currently working with a DEC-based policy think tank. I think it's fair to say that internet policy and international affairs move together. Fragmenting internet is also fragmenting the world order right now. Internet has been both a product and a driver of political realities. We saw that in Arab Spring. We saw that in US elections 2016. I would like your thoughts on how interoperability opens doors to participation and invites collaboration as cross-border um, goals emerge from containing COVID to tackling climate change. Uh, I believe interoperable internet becomes more crucial. My question to the panel is that in what ways is ICANN playing in making interoperable internet more understandable and immediately relevant to policy? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna check, take two interventions from the on-site participants. So we have Shokri and then Jorge. Ah, it was an online hand, but yes, yeah. Because I thought that uh, I have to do to raise my hand in the, in the so uh, I really appreciate what you have said uh, Ram and uh, your openness for the development of uh, technology and uh, your openness for the development uh, of uh, technologic uh, a new technology but I am quite confused. Are you here defending the fragmentation of internet or you are uh, defending the centralized system of the DNS? Because if a new technology is emerging and uh, 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 going ahead for a decentralized uh system what will be what we can do are we going to follow this uh, new trend or we are uh, we are looking to ma maintaining this centralized uh system that in some uh, cases it's not in the profit of the end user in contrast of that mentioned by some uh, of my colleagues, because end user finally, or uh, the user of internet is looking for improving the service that he, uh, he's going. So I'm ins insisting that let's uh, discuss this centralized model. Not be, uh, Uh, a lot uh, be conservative uh, and push the end user to looking for for something else. This is my idea. If I may, if I may quickly uh, respond to that, um, I don't think this is a a um, fight between quote unquote a decentralized internet versus a centralized internet. We all know that the DNS. Uh, from its very design is decentralized. That's not the issue. Uh, what I'm actually arguing for is a centralized user experience, a predictable common user experience using terminology that actually means the same thing everywhere where a TLD means something to everybody, the same thing. That's I'm, So I'm solving and I'm uh, advocating for the defense of that predictable common user experience that internet fragmentation um, really threatens. Thank you, um, Ram. So, Jorge? Hello, everyone. I hope you hear me okay. Um, this is Jorge Cancio from uh, the Swiss government. So, but uh, I'm speaking here more on a personal basis. Uh, I think it's important to, to be aware and 
Bruna mentioned it, that uh, there are ongoing discussions at the international level on the issue of internet fragmentation, um, especially uh, the discussions at the UN Internet Governance Forum and uh, the forthcoming Global Digital Compact, which has been um, proposed by the UN Secretary General. So this is a, an issue very high on the agenda of uh, digital governance. I think this community has a, has a role to play and it's important that all uh, engage in, in such discussions. Um, what I can, can do uh, regarding these uh, trends or narratives, as uh, Brazil mentioned, I think uh, is uh, twofold, probably. Uh, on the one side, of course, to continue its uh, operational excellence in making the DNS work or contributing to making the DNS work, as we saw through the pandemic. So there, uh, ICANN has very important functions. And uh, on the other side, I think uh, as a model of multi-stakeholder co collaboration, uh, I think that ICANN is best advised if we continue working on our inclusivity and diversity, because those are really the, the cornerstones of the legitimacy of this model. And uh, what is uh, out there still as a question, which has been posed in the past by, by other countries, is whether some of these functions or some of these elements that uh, some have called the public core of the internet need some sort of international protection, some sort of agreement that uh, uh, countries will not interfere with such functions. Because nowadays, uh, this depends very much on the goodwill of, uh, of countries. And uh, there's the possibility of being uh, immersed in sanctions, in uh, uh, geopolitical tensions. And there are no protections, at least uh, nowadays, uh, on these functions that are performed by ICANN and other uh, critical institutions in the coordination of the DNS. So that's probably something to uh, be continued to be discussed and which was uh, uh, addressed to a certain extent by the uh, cross-community working group on accountability uh, some years ago. So I leave it by that and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jorge. And before we move on to the, to the queue, we also have a word cloud on, um, so we can get more, gather more views about this. The question on the word cloud is what concerns you the most about internet fragmentation? So we'll post um, the links and, and the ways to participate in that um, in both the chat and here. And as we move on in the conversation, we'll have it on the screen soon. So um, Chris, please go ahead. Thanks very much. Um, Chris Buckridge from RIPE NCC. Uh, and also currently a member of the IGF MAG. Um, I think one thing worth noting that I haven't heard mentioned too much is that this is far from a new conversation. Um, there has been a lot of work done on this over the last 10, 15 years, a lot of it by members of this community. Um, so I'm looking back to things like the uh, World Economic Forum paper that came in 2016, which really helped um, lay the groundwork for a lot. There have also been some more recent papers. I think there were links to some of them in the um, Zoom chat, but which further complicate um, the discussion and the matter. I think despite that, perhaps to an extent because of that, we have driven ourselves into a bit of a cul-de-sac <laughs> in that we don't have a really clear common definition of what fragmentation is. Um, so in pinning my colors to the mast here, I want to call back to John Crane's initial intervention there, because I think he really captured it quite nicely and pithily uh, when he said it's, it's that breakdown or the fragmentation of the consensus, the agreement ar around what actually is necessary to constitute a global internet. I think that's a really 
good way of framing and constraining the conversation. Um, but I also recognize that it's useful and important that we've had quite a long discussion here and in other venues about the definition because, and here I wanna refer back to what some of my, well, colleagues from the GAC have said, Inter avoiding internet fragmentation has become a sort of byword and not just in the technical community, not just in ICANN, but in up as far as the, the top levels of the UN. So looking to next year, the, well, the global digital compact to be prepared in the coming years, avoiding internet fragmentation has actually been identified by the secretary general as a key theme of that. Now, to me, that's a problem if we don't even have a clear sense of what avoiding internet fragmentation looks like. So I think for this community, it's a really important discussion to try and nail down, try and identify what we actually mean. But then last point here as well, I think it's also equally important to move from that discussion argument about definition to the practical measures of what can we actually do then? And I think um, James, you started to mention this, but others have pointed it out as well. And I think, yes, communicating very specifically on issues or, or actions that can cause that fragmentation is really important. Um, Jorge, I think, made some really important points there about maybe there are other practical measures that different stakeholders, regulators, legislators can do to try and ensure that that fragmentation doesn't happen. Um, so finally, 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 um, as I said, I'm a member of the IGF MAG um, with Bruna. I'm actually facilitating a main session at this year's IGF on avoiding internet fragmentation. So I'd really invite people to get involved there um, and, and to work with us to try and bring this to practical outcomes that we can actually do to avoid fragmentation. Thanks. Thanks so much, Chris. I'm closing both queues. Um, we have Nigel and Tom, Thomas Barrett on the online queue, and we also have four more um, people queuing up here, but I'm gonna go to the online first. So Thomas. Thank you very much, and, and thank you, everyone, for, for this really uh, useful discussion. Um, I, I do think it would be helpful to uh, address what fragmentation is. You know, alternative routes have always existed, even before ICANN was formed. Uh, and yet, uh, those alternative routes uh, have not been part of the ICANN community. So uh, I, I guess the question is, does ICANN want to include alternative routes? Uh, of course, nowadays we're, we're talking about blockchain, or do we think those are, as long as they don't collide with a unitary route, then they're not within ICANN's remit. So I'd like to throw that question out. Thanks so much, Thomas. Um, can I go to Nigel now? Yes, thank you very much. I'll, I'll just be very brief. I just wanted to raise a, a, a few more issues that have occurred in the uh, in the chat. First of all, over 300 people, as you can uh, see, so really excellent uh, participation. Uh, the ICANN role, of course, has been discussed. Where, how, what should ICANN do, what it shouldn't do. IP4, IP4, IPv4 versus IPv6 has been uh, raised. Is this, a, is, is this an issue? Of course, uh, blockchain, is that within scope? People have been uh, uh, discussing that, of course. Uh, not having access, uh, Stephanie Perrin uh, raised this uh, point, which uh, that for some people, fragmentation is, is a reality every day because they can't afford to or they can't get access to the internet. So for them, uh, uh, the internet is also already perhaps fragmented. Uh, subdomains. The role of subdomains in, in, in this debate has been uh, raised and uh, no clear definition of what internet uh, uh, fragmentation is. Uh, so thank you very much. Thanks, Nigel. Um, next up. Great. Thank you, Bruna. Um, and thank you to my colleagues as well have, who have made some great points today. Um, and my name's Roz Kenny Birch. I'm the GAC alternate for the UK. In the context of this fruitful discussion, I thought it would be useful to highlight the important work being taken forward on this issue through the IGF policy network on fragmentation. 
It is encouraging that the network plans to carry out a survey, the purpose of which is to collect existing resources, case studies, and perspectives on fragmentation from the wider community in order to map existing thinking and start to th synthesize different positions. I wondered if panelists had also been following this work and had any comments on it. We as the UK support the work of the network and look forward to seeing the results of the survey. Thank you. Thank you so much for us. Um, next up. Buenos días, Javier Rua Jovet, uh, I'm a CCNSO counselor. Uh, I speak in my uh, individual capacity. And I speak here as a individual user and also as a citizen from a non-sovereign territory. And I wanna make a statement about multilateralism, the world of sovereign states versus multiholderism, the world of everybody that wants to participate. And, uh, and to echo a, a bit on, on James' comments on, on the need to do more inward and outward defense of multi-stakeholderism. And, and from my perspective and what that means to me uh, as a Puerto Rican, um, you know, we, I can be here because this is a multi-stakeholder context. Uh, as an individual uh, and as a member of a society that is not a sovereign state. Um, that is not possible in multilateral context or it's very difficult in multilateral context. Uh, so this is the broader, part of the broader geopolitical issue here that one of the drivers of this uh, potential fragmentation is this, is this competition of governance models a little bit. So I just wanted to state clearly a, a, a view of a very practical aspect of, of the benefits of the multi-stakeholder model versus o other state-driven models uh, to achieve uh, you know, conclusions that, that take into consideration very, very diverse views, uh, particularly views that are usually not present like mine in a multilateral uh, context. So just a general statement about uh, the need to really defend this type of governance. Uh, we can't let it pass us by. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Um, next up. Um, uh, Debbie Cake. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, it, it's sort of about around uh, Ram's discussion about the value of what a TLD means and expressing that, but also um, around the this idea of alternate routes. And uh, I, I mean, obviously, there's a long history with ICANN and alternate routes, and not real, and not being very friendly to them, and having expressing its, uh, you know, advantages over them. But we have this uh, the the RFC 6761 special use domain names process. Um, a lot of that problem with alternate routes is name collision, um, and that does prevent name collision. Um, we do need to uh, most of the things in that. Uh, list, uh, well, actually most of them are subdomains of .arpa uh, and thus managed within ICANN, but um, the, most of the things are pretty obvious in their use. Um, but when we add things like dot blockchain, it may not be obvious. I, we're interested in um, sort of responses, but also mindful if we do start to um, really try to articulate the differences between alternate routes and, you know, and ICANN um, TLDs, then to be very mindful of that um, space within the process, and perhaps we should be, um, you know, encouraging not not in, just encouraging groups to work entirely without the system, but to say here is this point of um, connection that uh, the the special use domain names, and to encourage people to at least think about taking that to the IETF and working with them. Then that, and as we work within ICANN to articulate that. Um, the difference, but also, you know, the value of there being one unified system, even if it allows some diversity. Thanks. Thanks so much. Next one. Uh, good morning and assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Abdullah. Uh, this is my first ICANN meeting as a fellow. I am from Pakistan and uh, my job is I am a STEM educator and computer science instructor. I believe that uh, assignment of GTLD has an important role and impact on expansion of internet. My question is to know whether and how the child and a common man person's safety is considered in the new GTLDs in this dark fragmentation and what is the role of ICANN? Thanks. 
Thanks a lot. And the last intervention from the floor. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Peggy. I um, come from Taiwan, and I work in a company named Made Talent. Um, I got a little wild, maybe a little tricky opinion to a public, but I'm not uh, very good in English, so I will speak in my native language, Chinese. Uh, 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 internet fragmentation 转念去想的话，其实他对于有一些犯罪的行为，比如说像那个儿少性剥削之类的东西，他其实在初步的时候，甚至他可以去有效去阻挡这个犯罪的扩散。Maybe that's a little um，可以去保护这些，嗯，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护这些人，可以去保护
The biggest thing that we at ICANN need to do is to ensure that that expectation from users of a single interoperable namespace that we work to fulfill that expectation. That's it. Got it. Thank you. Uh, I repeat myself, I think internet is the defining technology of our time. And I think the technical problems will be resolved once technology or internet had a geopolitical component. Today, it has become a geopolitical issue with technical component. I'm confident that technical issues will be resolved. The key problem is the geopolitical issues that we need to focus on. With that also, I wanna thank you everybody for being here and Pastor Bruno. Thank you, um, Paul. There's a uh, an ironic T-shirt uh, showing the layered internet model, which has politics as, at the top. Um, at, it's actually more true than ironic these days. And I think the the place where fragmentation is most apparent and most costly and where we need to do most work, as I said before, to fight it is at the political la layer. Um, that uh, the, the, the solution to doing that is participation. So I think this is also a, a question about the function of ICANN. It's not ICANN's role to be all things to all people, but this is a really good example of a place where the bridges can be can help to be um, built between the disparate political models and the fragmented political models that we have. But we also have the IGF. If anyone thinks the IGF's job is over or the evolution of the IGF is over, I think that's quite mistaken. I think that is a place where we've got a huge amount of work to fight fragmentation on the on the uh, political level. And we do that through participation. So I, I think this the internet's getting bigger, it's getting more complex, the challenges are getting bigger and the cost and the investment that needs to be made in that is is getting bigger, I'm sorry to say. So that's that's what we need to do to fight the the, the fragmentation that really is coming from the top down on the internet. Thank you. Thank you. And Jane? So just briefly, I think the uh, most effective way to uh, push back against fragmentation is to provide a, an effective and conspicuous contrast and uphold um, the value and the, uh, the meaningfulness of a unified internet both in our discussions and in our actions. And I think that means that it falls to all of us to take that out into our day jobs, uh, as well as to uh, help to ensure that um, ICANN's work products are being completed in a timely manner. I think that will uh, tamp down on a lot of the ideas that uh, maybe this model or this, uh, uh, this unified internet is no longer desirable. So less telling and more showing. Thanks James. And last but not least, Farzani, if you're still in the session. I yeah, I am, despite being midnight, but okay, I love this conversation. So uh, basically, I don't agree that uh, we, need to, we need to look at our architecture, but we need to uh, move away from the narrative of uh, uh, layers of the internet um, and look at what has become or is becoming the critical property of the internet. What are the uh, critical properties of the internet that if people do not have access to, they will not be able to connect to the internet. It doesn't mean that they cannot have access to online services or have like lower quality. It means that who uh, interoperable uh, global internet. And that is not only by uh, technical, um uh, coordination or technical uh, shortcoming it's uh, also because of uh, policies that uh, some uh, corporations uh, could take that uh, could uh, kind of hamper their access and also through our collective action and i i want to mention that we are here because we give legitimacy uh, i can is here because we give legitimacy to i can to coordinate an interoperable um, uh, domain name uh, system. And uh, in, in order to, and if we, and we need to preserve that, but we also need to monitor the risks and opportunities that John tells me that are out there that uh, provide a better 
um, access that facilitate access to interconnection for people without uh, with, uh, uh, without uh, any indiscrimination and uh, without any discrimination. And uh, just a last point that I want to raise is that I, I think that in these discussions we don't mention Afghanistan access to the internet much. And um, I go around and talk about Afghanistan because I think that has been overlooked by many of the, uh, many of us, and um, it might not be an internet um, like an ICANN mandate, but I just want to put that on your mind as the uh, last remark uh, to think about how their access can, uh, has been affected, and think about ways to uh, help and support that that internet community. Thank you. Thank you, Farzani. I'm not sure if Nigel has any closing remarks as well, but I would like to give him the chance to. No, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely fine. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nigel. And maybe last but not least, and also talking about participation, we planned with this this plenary session also to launch a call for action to the Global Digital Compact, as it was already as it was already mentioned by some of the um, interventions before. And um, the idea behind the GDC is to outline shared principles for an open, free, and secure digital future for all. And internet fragmentation is very much on the agenda for this discussion. So. Any contribution from the ICANN community in a bottom-up way will be a very interesting one. And, and that's also something we plan to, to share with you all. So I think, thank you all for joining and for staying around. We went 10 minutes after, but thanks for joining. Thank you, you can stop the recording. <laughs>